This is the lateral head because it's on the outside. This is the long head. The long head runs all the way from the elbow. It goes all the way up into the shoulder. So it goes way, way, way up in here. That's why it's called the long head. Okay? And the function of the triceps is to extend the arm. So when I extend the arm, you can see that it bunches up. Okay? And if I pull on it, it'll cause the arm to extend. See? Like when you get two problems, okay. like so the origin is going to be up in the shoulder, the insertion is going to be down so on the energy, radius. Just now, pipe it in your calculator, same way that you see what we're going to do is we're going to take and get a probe underneath of the ten. lateral head. Okay, so here's the lateral head by itself. We're going to transect it right down the middle. All right, hold on. Let's see if that's right. Times. And once we've done this. I'm going to leave this 1.69 times 10. We can cut 10 some of this tissue out of the way. 6.44 times 17.50. And now what we see is there's a little tiny, tiny, tiny muscle right in here. This is the medial head of the triceps. So we have lateral, long, medial heads. So that's why it's triceps. It's got three parts. So we have lateral, long, medial heads. So that's why it's triceps. It's got three parts. Is if you look at the inside of the upper arm, there's a little flat muscle here that we don't have that we need to get rid of. So we're going to cut this very thin muscle out of the way. Now on this side it's already been removed. So you can see the back side of the, of the tricep. So in order to remove this muscle, we just have to get underneath the fascia and so I can leave all this stuff up here. This muscle is very thin, so you can literally like poke a hole right through it all right, so what and get is underneath. And you can see like I'm up underneath all this fascia here. If I go ahead and take a scalpel and just cut very lightly right along here. I can take this muscle and remove it. Does that look like a scary number to either of you? What's the name of this muscle that we're getting rid of? I don't even know. I don't even know. I just know it's something we don't have, and it, I don't even know what it does. I think it's a little helper muscle. It's like a little synergist with the pecs. What this number really is, is 1.69, and then... You move the glass in 10 there we go. And once we have this S out of the way, we can see the triceps in here. We can actually see this is the biceps on this side. So here's our biceps in the front. You can actually see this big nerve running through the arm here. It's the brachial nerve, but I'm not sure. I'm not real good on my nerves. Okay, so once we get this out of the way, we can start to see inside of here. We find the humerus. The humerus is actually right in here. So I'm actually tapping on the humerus right, right there. So all of these are located on the back side of the humerus. On the front side of the humerus, we have two muscles that are flexors. The first one right here, this little guy, is the brachialis. Okay? The brachialis is on the lateral side of the, of the upper arm. And it is a flexor, so when I flex the arm, it should move, which it doesn't, but you can use your imagination. To find the other flexor, we're going to have to cut through this clavobrachialis. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift this up, and we're going to transect clavobrachialis. And once we again, that's a muscle that... Cats have that we don't. Yeah. Right. We have it, it just attaches to the shoulder. It's just part of our deltoid. Basically, our deltoid, the so muscle is kind of split into three divisions. Okay. In the cat, instead of being three divisions, it's like literally three separate, completely no, distinct no. muscles. Okay, so once we get into this region. Now, you could probably leave this alone like this. But in a, in a, in a problem that is in scientific meditation, they probably want you to change it back. Here's our brachialis. So we want the decimal point and there's a whole here, bunch of muscles coming across here. So we moved our clavobrachialis out of the way. These muscles are actually our pecs, where our pecs are actually coming across and inserting onto the humerus. So here's the humerus right here. Okay? So to find the biceps, we actually have to cut through 
these packs. For, for height. So I'm going to cut our packs a second time. So the best answer here would be in back and side. And in this case, um, you can use a scalpel you, or scissors. It doesn't matter. I'm not saying you're wrong if you put it like this, but it makes more sense. To have, like this is an easier number to look at. Okay. All right, go ahead to the restroom and get some tissue. See maybe we don't have time to do a couple more and get back. Are you guys actually writing down answers? Like should you get credit for it? I hope so. <laughs> Mr. Hurley, you are a good man. Bless you for the work you do. No problem. I haven't really been helping out much this year, so. I appreciate your help. I don't mind teaching. So if we get down into this little pocket, so I've cut all through these packs, we've actually, uh, we can see now, these are the continuation of this bundle of nerves and, and uh, veins through here and arteries. So this is like our main trunk running through here. Okay. If we go ahead and cut this out. This allows us to find our biceps. So the biceps is buried all the way down in this little pocket underneath all these veins and arteries and here it is. Okay, so here was our long head, here's our medial head of the triceps and right next to that is the biceps. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make one more little incision here. Still clavobrachialis. Actually I'm cutting through peck. Oh, right peck. Now. Algebra is not hard, Mike. Once you get the hang of it, you use these formulas. I mean, you do them over and over, and just all you do is plug in numbers. You plug in and solve. And so we're cutting the peck and that clay will break the outside of the way. And now we can see here's our bicep running all the way up here. Right next to that is this brachialis. I'll this one more time. This is very complicated. You just kind of have to like play it by ear, I think. I haven't found a really good way to cut this yet. But you can see biceps, brachialis, biceps, brachialis. So they're side by side and they're both flex. But you can see biceps, brachialis, biceps, brachialis. So they're side by side and they're both flexors. So, so they're going to flex the arm at the elbow. So you should be able to see it go on the flexes. So they work opposite of the, the uh, triceps. So both these muscles are side by side. In the human body, they're actually located slightly differently. The brachialis is underneath the biceps. Okay? But you see it's got a nice, straight, strong thing. The biceps is larger than the brachialis, which is very small. And the biceps and brachialis would both be larger in humans than they are in cats. Right, right. right. Okay? Good. Right, um, look at the forearm. In the forearm, okay. you have two sets of muscles. You have what we call the flexors, which are on the bottom side, so they'd be on the anterior portion. And they are going to be responsible for doing this. They're going to flex the paw. They're also going to flex the digits of the paw, too. So they're actually going to bend the toes and bend this forward. On the top side, on the posterior side, we have what are called the extensors which are going to extend the paw. They're going to pull the paw out. So these muscles, when they contract, pull the paw out. 